welcome to Shootcast, where we shoot on everything wrestling related. Uh, tonight we got uh, me, obviously, Josh. We've got Jason. Hello. We've got Thomas. Hello. And we've got our good friend Ziggy. Hello. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about our favorite match stipulations, along with you know some of the matches we've seen that had some pretty cool stipulations. Um, let's get right into it. Um, one we always think of, obviously, is Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell was <laughs> one of the coolest matches. Like it, it, it took the cage match to a whole nother level. Yeah. And I know somebody in this room mm-hmm. has a favorite. Mm-hmm. I wonder who that is. Hell in a Cell match, but. Let's let's go down the list. If if you've seen a Hell in a Cell match, you know what I'm talking about. It's just it's brutal beyond means. Are you familiar with it? I, as a person who's unfamiliar with it, would you please continue to describe it? So uh, Thomas, uh, one of our good friends here, he is he is hilarious, um, and he he has watched wrestling before, but not nearly as much as the other three in the room right now. Yeah. Um, what the Hell in a Cell match is is we take a normal cage match, we move it six feet away from the ring. Okay. So now it is encased the ring and some of the floor, and they put a top on the cage. The sun's not safe. It's yeah. not it's safe like at all. A, and safe. it's like 20 or 30 feet to the top of the cage. It's it's absolutely terrifying. Um, and we... Uh, well, the difference, the, one of the key differences, too, is that in a normal cage match, getting out of the cage ends the match. Yeah. It, in this one, getting out of the cage means... You're probably going to the top of the cage, and somebody's probably falling off. Falling right. off or through. Yep, or uh, jumping off. Yes. Like Shane McMahon. So I've been uh, around a while, but I believe one of the things that I have seen like this is uh, when the dude who wore all the flannel. Mm-hmm. Um, can't think Mc, his name. McFoley. 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 When Undertaker McFoley. threw him off the top. Yeah, so yep. he busted yes. his bottom lip out, and he was able to stick his tongue through. That would probably right. be my one experience right. with Right. Well, when he, fell, when when he fell through, um, what happened was... He kneed himself in the face, and his tooth ripped through his lip and then got stuck in his nose. So what they did is when they brought the camera up, he wanted people to see the hole, so he actually stuck his tongue through the hole to make it look more graphic. But if you see something in his nose it looks like a booger, it's actually his tooth. Yeah. And yeah, that was um, that was the second bump like that he took that match. And we can't, we obviously can't, like, overlook Shane McMahon, who has made this match... Honestly, his trademark. This it, he used to be, you know, all flash and jump across the ring. No, now it's Shane jumping off the top of that cage on purpose. Right. Uh, he, he so Shane last uh, a few years ago at WrestleMania did an elbow drop twenty feet off the top of this onto a table onto a person, which the person then moved. They moved, yeah. And he just hits table. Oh but, my god! And they fall so fast at thirty feet. He just. He, God, he's just like a, just a stack of bricks. So, Ziggy, I know you have a favorite Hell in a Cell match. It was the the, the first, the the Undertaker versus... Oh, yeah. Um, was it Shawn Michaels or Mankind? Mankind. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, when he, like, the... the, the you watch the ricketiness as they're oh, climbing on the roof. Yeah. And you're like, this is going to go. Mm-hmm. Like, what is happening? Yeah. And I remember distinctly being like... Oh well, he's dead. Yeah, like yeah. Buh, buh. and I was, God, I don't know how old I was. But I don't think I was. I, when did that match take place? I, w- uh, I would say it happened in it happened twenty nine, years ago. Yeah, ninety eight. Yeah, so yeah. I was I just graduated you, high school. Yeah, you were nineteen. Yeah, I just graduated high school, and I'm like, well, I just I just witnessed my first guy dying. Yeah, like, yeah. Holy crap! Oh yeah. And then you see, in there was a, it cut to something, like he went through the roof. And he went through the floor, mm-hmm. and like there, it, it, it was just. Well, that was the second one. The first one too. He just throws him straight off the cage to oh, the yeah. table on, on the, the outside. Table. Yeah, the yeah right in the table. announce table. Yep. Yeah, oh, and they and, man, and I forgot that was the first. That. that was like the first like yeah. five minutes. They're just like, well, yeah. see ya. And, and see ya. Pat, Pat Pat Patterson actually has a great line about that, saying how he was there. Pat Patterson is like their main guy. He's the guy behind stage, making sure everything's. Going correctly and everything right. else. First IC champion. First IC champion. He always has to say that. Intercontinental. Right. Yep. And he has a, he has a line about he told Mick Foley not to go off the top of the cage, like he told him don't do it. And within the first five minutes of the match, 
<laughs> right off the cage. Right off the top. Mick Foley had a real good eye when he should listen and when he shouldn't. Because mm-hmm. that one moment made him. Like, he will never have to, like really work again mm, he can right. just show that video yeah. and oh, yeah. people will want his autograph that him going off the top of cage is like one of the most iconic images you'll ever see in wrestling yeah. and then they carry him away on the stretcher yep. you remember this yep. uh, they carry him away on the stretcher and he gets up right. like the fucking maniac he is right and goes back to the ring and then gets thrown through the top yeah. of the cage into the ring yeah because when he gets off the stretcher undertaker's already on the top of the cage he's still up there and he literally just starts climbing back up to the cage that man had the biggest set of cojones. Yeah, he had to be on. I mean, he had to have been on like autopilot after that first throw because you're just like, that's like pure adrenaline. How does the how does you're, the human body survive? I don't know. This? And that was his thing is that he took because see he they, did so much damage. And like, people forget that he dude. wrestled. He started in like the 80s, so he was doing he started, like I think he started earlier than that because they were talking about the Texas Conservatorium. Yeah, but he I think he was doing. He started I think the mid 80s. Yeah, because he was doing like he was in WCW. Wrestling Vader, and if you know anything about Vader, he is—he yeah. just beats he the ju- he, piss out yeah. of people. And got, uh, rest, he's how he got his ear ripped off. Yeah, yeah. and rest Vader's soul. He just yep. passed yeah, away. Yeah. Um, um, but yeah, that's how Mick Foley lost half of his ear because he was in a match with Vader, and he went and got locked up in the ropes, and the ropes just started strangling him, and he couldn't pull it apart. So when he did, it clasped onto his ear and ripped half of it off in the middle of the match. Um, yep. That was before the Hell in the Cell. But <laughs> yeah. speaking again to make Foley's toughness, remember when he used to in WCW, he'd pull back those, he'd pull back the, uh, the oh uh, the padding, the padding yeah. on yeah, the floor, and he'd go and do an elbow, and half the time the people would move, and he'd just land yep. flat back on cement. Ugh. Yep, yeah, or take no. backdrops onto uh, yeah. onto the things. Yeah, Hell in a Cell is crazy. The first one I love because that's when Kane debuted. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, when he rips the door off, and yeah, he's anyone, just so jacked. Anyone, any of them with. Any of them I with Shawn it. Michaels was amazing. Yeah. Because anytime you put somebody with that athleticism and you and you can find them, mm-hmm. now they have to work extra hard and there's not a lot of moving around, not a lot of high jumping. That's what he was known for early on. And he showed he is probably the best in ring wrestler of all time. Yeah, this in is those matches. this would be an interesting case study. Name me one bad Shawn Michaels match. I don't think you can. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Uh, hold on. Marty Jannetty versus Shawn Michaels. See, but it wasn't, like, terrible, because <laughs> literally Shawn Michaels could fight, like, a wet paper bag and it'd be a five-star match. That's like, true. I can't imagine Shawn Michaels having... I, I don't know. I not I'm going to have to think about that. You, as the ultimate Shawn Michaels fan... I don't know. I mean, uh, you would know more than I would. I... Because, I mean, I've seen... Don't get me wrong, because I, I love The Undertaker. Right. That has always been my favorite. Yeah. That and Arn Anderson, as we know. I love that. Um, I love that Arn Anderson's your favorite. Arn Anderson. Lazy and, four, and, baby. Lazy four, baby. I love it. Oh, the Enforcer, man. You can't... Oh. <laughs> He's just like... Well, yeah, I'm Lazy here. four. Buh. Well, but, so... Oh. I, I, can, I can remember uh, bad matches that The Undertaker did. Where yeah. I was watching a match, and you're just like... This just yeah. isn't that. This it, just isn't that entertaining. Yeah, it's not really that. It's the same thing, same repetitive thing. Right. And he wasn't. But with like Shawn Michaels, he, he only got better with age too. Because like when he came back in the two thousands, he had some of the greatest matches that I've ever seen. Like when he wrestled Kurt Angle at WrestleMania, it was incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's when he had those two back to back matches with the Undertaker, mm-hmm. which were ju- were my favorite match of all time. Is him versus the Undertaker, the number part one. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Cause it was just so, it was so good. You just, you can't, you can't teach what he has, and that was his thing. He's never be, he just started training because he tried to do training before, but he can't. He's not a teacher because he just, he's so natural. He yeah. doesn't know how to be like, no, this is how you do it. Yeah, he just does it. He so can't he, explain it. He right. just does it. He just freaking does it. If you want to see a really good match, watch him versus Shelton Benjamin. Yes, it's one of the best. It's probably my favorite super kick of all time. Yeah, it's incredible. Sh- so, changing the gears just a little bit, we're going away from the uh, Hell in a Cell. Uh, we're going to go with Thomas. What is, like, as a as a time-to-time wrestling fan, what is your favorite match type of all time? Well, uh, I would probably say that it's going to sound weird, but I think that the standard, just honestly. A, yeah, just yeah. standard Cause, one, two, three. Because if you get a standard one, two, three, or if you get, like, a, mm. it's going to be possibly yeah. 
you know, I think well, all of us can kind of agree to it because you're not necessarily having as crazy stuff. Yeah. Right. And mm-hmm. what it does boil down to is just your standard performer versus performer. Right. Yeah. And you have yeah. your athlete versus athlete. Right. Well, mm-hmm. And without mm-hmm. getting partners in there, which partners are entertaining. Right. I mm-hmm. think that it is. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, when you have the rule slips or if you have somebody slide somebody a chair, right. you, mm-hmm. you get some shenanigans, heavy stuff right. in there. But if you're yeah. going athlete versus athlete. Right grabbing their own nonsense from the crowd or just going, right. hey, this is me versus you. I'm going <clears> to <throat> body lift you off of this thing onto the pavement or I'm going to body lift you onto this table. Right. Then I feel like that has some shock and awe factor. This is like two essential, like physically strong individuals right. who are going toe to toe. And yeah. then you get to mm. see the classic aspects of wrestling as well, where you get to see the classic pins, the classic clotheslines, the right. classic drops, things that make wrestling wrestling really stand out right. more mm-hmm. when it becomes a one v one kind of match. Right. Yeah, it's yeah. more about it's like it's more about the story. It's not you don't have the expectation of Oh, this is hell in a cell. So somebody's gonna have to go through it, or somebody's right. gonna have to get hurt. You yeah, know, something. Because my, like I said, my favorite match of all time is Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels, and that was literally just them fighting each other. There yeah. was no outside interference. Right. Nobody, no, no, shenanigans. no shenanigans. It was literally just a one-on-one and, competition, and, and it was absolutely incredible. I've said this numerous times. One of my favorite matches of all time is WrestleMania three. Macho Man versus Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Steamboat. Oh, yep. Yeah, yeah. It just, it I just. This is a good match. wrestling match. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good one. And and it's it's true. What they say is, you know, Hogan Andre sold the show, but, but Macho they, Man and Steamboat they stole, stole it. it. Yep. And yep, they, they might not have come to see them, but they had the best match of the night. Yeah, probably the best match of the decade. It's it's probably top three matches of WrestleMania of all time. Yeah, or just matches in general. Yeah, and um. That it's very true what you say. That standard one, two, three. That's what we all fell in love with watching right. wrestling. You right. didn't. Wa- you didn't come into wrestling watching the, especially with us, because yeah, and like we, the new school, cage, maybe yeah, new but school like with us, cage, it didn't exist. Yeah, cages didn't happen unless your mom or dad bought the pay per view on Sunday. Yeah. Or, right, or and it was like a that. huge match. Like yeah. they built around that match. Now they have entire events built around things, and you kind of, it takes the luster away. Yeah, that's why when you had like your Survivor Series matches and stuff like that, it meant more because you didn't really see yeah, it. Yeah, you as didn't much. see those. Right now, it's just like you have entire pay per views where every match is going to be Extreme Rules, or every match is going to be this or this. And I, it kills I will t- it. I will tell you who is bringing back right now in this day and age. Who is bringing back that single match? mentality of I'm going to work this one match I'm going to work this one match and just regular matches is Braun Strowman right now yes I mean he's killing it just doing a standard match it is it's intimidating to get in the ring with Braun Strowman it's it's selling it once again you got this big intimidating force like you did Hogan or Andre right and it's bringing back those standard matches and that's pretty cool admittedly I don't know who that is Ron Strowman, he's he's just an absolute freak of nature. He's like what what Brock Lesnar wishes he was. It, think think Big Show and Brock Lesnar had a baby. Yeah. Well, I love Who's the Big Show. Really, Brock Lesnar, I hate yeah, but he's really Ron Strowman's so good. This guy, he, he he's he's would, phenomenal. Where would you compare his performance level? Like when it comes to like a very endearing character. Because, I mean, yeah, Ziggy classically, who would he match up against? Because um, like, Ziggy's just saying that see, right Braun now. See, Braun Strowman, I think, would be good in any era. Yes. That's the diff- That's the thing that I think defines a wrestler. It if you could wrestle, timeless. right? If you could wrestle today, you should be able to wrestle in the '90s. You should be able to wrestle in the '80s. 80s you 60s, know, if 70s. you saw Braun Strowman in any era, his his wrestling style, like he, he's just it's so terrifying. different. Yeah, it's right. so different. He's a big man, but that can move. Yeah, you know he, what I mean. He'll chase you down. He's he might be six foot eight and three hundred and eighty five pounds, legit. Um, he'll go to the he'll top chase rope. You down. He, he'll go to the top rope if he needs. Does drop kicks? Proved it off the top rope. He's one of those guys that's like he's. I think like he's, human evo- Like you're watching like human evolution. You're watching a man that is as big as him doing things that a guy like my size would be able to do. Right. You know what I mean? Or something and that... Anybody that knows Jason, he is a very petite man. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a Com- petite dancer compar- yeah. Compared to, uh, yes, Braun Strowman. Yes. Compared but, uh... To, <laughs> compared to a lot of Compared us, to a four-year-old yeah. girl. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I have the body structure of my daughter. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no... He's not lying, people. He's really no, not he, lying. No, he's one of those guys that I think is timeless. Like, he could literally come into any era... I mean, his theme, right when it starts off, is just Yeah, like, just the Whoa! scream. Yeah, it's just him screaming. Um, but, so, moving on from the standard match, Jason... That's a good answer. Yeah, it's such a... It, I would it, never have thought to pick no, just I, regular yeah, match. Yeah. 
Just a normal, like, Because Jack you get, I mean, that's all the classics are just mm -hmm. regular yeah, match. I mean, other than, like, your TLC. Or your triple threat or your tag team. Right. Most of them are, you know, Hogan and Andre was just a regular yeah. match, you know? I would almost say that, like, certain, like, championship titles are better as regular matches. Too. Oh, 100%. Yes. 100%. Like, if you can give a best person against best person scenario right. and you give them the standard format, right. it really shows that this person I, is superior than this person. In yeah, this when way. you base it purely on skill, it's like, yeah, of course, that's that. I, I, I totally to, agree. I'd love, still to this day, I'd love to see Shawn Michaels versus AJ Styles Me too. in a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Well, Shawn Michaels has been talking about it a little bit. Yeah. He's doing the performance center stuff. He's down in Orlando doing the training at NXT, so... so. If you, if Thomas looked at me a little bit. AJ Styles is probably the best performer on the planet right now. He's our gener he's this he's generation our, Shawn Michaels. He literally is Shawn Michaels if he was a little shorter. Yeah, and yeah. he's almost forty, and he's doing things he's that much I more athletic. Never I believe than Shawn was. Oh yeah, he's yeah. doing four fifty springboard four fifties, yeah. and he's almost forty. Um, but I think that's Lord, I think he, he grabs the top rope, springs onto it, does a complete flip, and then another half a flip, and yeah. then and then lands. Yeah, splash. I mean, he more. does stuff. He he gave Brock Lesnar his best match in years. Yeah, it's that's honestly very impressive because you see different athletes in the CrossFit area, and you right. see the people who really excel in that kind of area. Yeah, They're not necessarily. Older people, mm -hmm. right? Or if you see people in this kind of area, yeah. based on what you're saying and based on what it's I'm all about is, experience. Like, yeah, it sounds like the the longer you stay in it, right. the longer you're able. To the best guys going. that are wrestling now are probably in the 30s. Like yeah. wrestling is one of those things where for if you wrestle for 10 years, you still might not be that great, and it's not a big deal because <laughs> wrestling is like one of those things where you yeah you, you get, have a longer lifespan. You're not going to learn wrestling yeah, in five and years. And you're you going to get mean? you're going to get these younger guys that are. That are pushing the envelope, but they don't really find themselves. Like there's I no think, story, just yeah, flipping I think, and shit. Right. I think I think Cody Rhodes might be the one that that breaks that mold. Right, um, being a younger guy that has found himself. Yeah, after he um, left Dota, he and, his stock went through the roof. Well, I think that I think that has a lot to do with genetics. And, yeah, namesake. Uh, he's Dusty's kid. He's yeah. Dusty's kid. You're he's Dusty's kid. And it, there's something to growing up a fan, and he, right. you can tell he grew up a fan of right. wrestling. Let me see Dusty Rhodes. Oh my Dusty god, Rhodes that probably, freaking bionic elbow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the way he talked. <laughs> the nothing, nothing. Son, son of a you, plumb, son oh of a plumber god. daddy. If you, ever, if you ever listen to Stone Cold or uh, any of the podcasts, like the older guys, it, they tell Dusty stories all the time. And if you talk about Dusty on those podcasts, they make you do it in his voice. <laughs> so like, they're like, you have to do it. Because he was, he was a trainer in NXT for like the last 10 years. So like all these stories, all these, these people... Have talked about they're like Dusty helped me do this. You never ever hear a bad Dusty. Oh, Dusty kept me down. No, Dusty's like you gotta do this, baby, well, and blah 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 blah. You, and then, you gotta do this, baby. Well, baby, you gotta make sure you throw them, throw them elbows. Ziggy had never heard this story. Real quick, I have I have my own personal Dusty story. Um, Ziggy heard the story over the weekend of July Fourth. Um, my mom actually in the in the eighties. Oh, Almost okay. got picked up by Dusty Rhodes at a bar, mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> and mm -hmm. he, his <laughs> manager, was, his old, old Dusty, was about that. Oh, nothing is. He was about that Miss Chase. Dusty. There you go. Dusty was about that Miss Chase. But he, came, his manager, came over and asked my mom to dance. My mom obviously said no because I am my father's son. Uh, <laughs> and it's not a road. I'm not a road. He's not a Duffy. I'm not. I'm not a road. I'm not a road daddy. I'm not a road daddy. I can, I can road speak daddy. proper English. That's right. But I have to worry about it too much. I'm not the son of a wrestler or son of a plumber. That's um, right, son of a plumber. And um, but so Dusty came over and actually apologized because his manor, manager was kind of drunk and uh, paid for my mom to get a cab all the way home. She was nice. in college and basically protected her the whole night with Barry <laughs> Wyndham. Oh, yeah. And because, you know, they were running mates. And, and Barry Wyndham's a big boy. Yeah, they basically protected her and got her out to a cab. So uh, what I'm hearing is Dusty did not show her any techniques. He did no, not no, show he her did the bionic not, elbow. He did not he show, did not show her the bionic elbow. The true tragedy is the fact that she didn't pick up any now, techniques yes. to yeah. use on you. I actually or, have right. a funny story. To use on I know a lady who dated Chris Benoit. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. a bullet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he dated Crispin Waha for like a year and a half before he got married to his... To a woman. Yeah. Uh, to his victim. To his victim. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I. Ladies and gentlemen, I have no sympathy for Chris Benoit. Yeah. 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 Through this one. I mean, there's, like, picture proof. It is hilarious. That's insane. I was like, wow. Well. Yeah. Um, So we're going to move to my favorite match type, and that's going to, I'm going to take the Royal Rumble. I love the Rumble. Yes. The the Rumble, the Rumble to me is the, especially over the last few years, because they do a lot of, like, surprise entrance. Yes. And I think that's awesome, because you'll be watching the Royal Rumble and you don't, you haven't seen Kevin Nash or Diesel when in WWF. He was Diesel for like ten years, and, and then just sudden, randomly you hear his entrance music, and yeah. freaking Kevin Nash comes out yeah. with the glove. He does the fist thing, yeah. and he, he can't walk as good because he's because blown out both knees. Right, a thousand his quads times. are all destroyed. Yeah. But I love the surprise entrance. I also love that they started doing a women's battle or the women's Royal Rumble this year. Because they added so many. I mean, you got to see Trish Stratus and Lita and Jacqueline. You got to see all the women that really built the division. Yeah, and Trish looked amazing in that well, She's match. in her 40s, and you're just like, you should come back. So outside going in, just from an outside perspective, mm-hmm. do you feel like you appreciate those just for the nostalgia factor, for the shock and awe factor, or for the actual Okay, so I like event? I like the event itself, Okay, but uh, because I, it, cause it's, I think it's a really unique match type. I love that everything is timed. They usually have an. They usually they do what they call like an Iron Man award. So you might not win the Rumble, but there's guys that have been in the ring for over an hour. Right. Yeah. So Oof. so you and then yeah, yeah and then lose. Yeah, you know Chris there's guys Jett like Shawn uses. Michaels who started the Rumble and then won it. Yeah. So you know, won it number one or Rey Mysterio. Right. Or and you got to Rey Mysterio. Cold do something yep. Like yeah. Stone Cold did it too. And then you got to think too like that alone. It's two minutes or ninety seconds every entry, and there's thirty of them. So the match is going to be at least an hour long if you start that match. So you're an hour in, and then you still have to do the eliminations. You still have all these people coming in. I do like, I, and it is added now for the nostalgia factor. That is, but I, I do, I just love the match type. Um, just, and then also, you win the Royal Rumble, and then you main event WrestleMania. You get to, you fight for the world title. That's the whole point hey, of doing. I the love Royal that Rumble. it's the ultimate springboard. Right, because uh, the minute you win it, your your stock is instantly through the roof. Because you get the main event WrestleMania now, the um, biggest event of the year. Biggest event of the year. That's like winning a game in in football, and they're like, you go to the Super Bowl now. No matter who goes to the Super Bowl, you're in the Super Bowl and too. As much wow. as as much as yeah, I sh- essentially it, what it is. As much as I shit and crap on people like Chris Benoit. With all good right, I do. Right. As a human being, he's garbage. Yeah, Wrestler, he was fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah we, we, let's make that clear. That was, we do not like him as a that human was, being. That was completely unexpected, him him going the distance right. and winning yeah. that. And that's stuff that happens in the Royal Rumble, which is really cool. And it means something. It's not that one match where the person comes up and wins. Right. And it's good for them. No, this changes their career. Yeah. Right. This is a championship that follows them their entire career. Yeah. Um... Just when, like when, um, so then what you're saying is that the Royal Rumble itself is almost as if like it adds a permanent, like, oh, yes, yes, oh, yeah, permanent. yeah, because yeah, this is this is pretty much the company saying you're our guy, like, we have so much faith in you for the next four months, we're gonna build you up in a match that you for the world title. I mean, it's you're the main our event guy, the biggest or the show. guy you're facing is our guy, right? Because so, right. there's been many a times where you have won the Royal Rumble, you're a piece of shit, and they're, we're just wanting the good guy to kick the shit out of you. That's true. Um, yeah. So usually, but the, yes, with the is, Rumble, it it's generally it's a it's like the company has a ton of faith in you because they are building their biggest show around your match. So you usually, usually you, I mean, you so I think it's almost match, as big as the WrestleMania match itself. Well, you win that hmm. match, and you you're guaranteed through the company, you're guaranteed toy deals and yeah. all sorts. All your merch, yeah, merch your shirts, goes and, yep. up through the roof, and that's yep. huge for a wrestler. Right, just wrestling on WrestleMania, and you get a huge payout. Like, all DVD sales, you get tons of money if, just for being on the DVD. Mm-hmm. You get royalties like crazy for that kind of stuff. Right. Um, so that's and that's why I like it because you, it's like it literally can can make a wrestler. Like they had a few years ago where they everybody wanted Daniel Bryan to win, he got eliminated, and the crowd took over the rest of the show. Yeah. Like people so, lost their so, minds. So Daniel Bryan, he he's going into <clears throat> what what we thought was going to be his last. Like go round, kind of. Right. It was. It you was, thought this was gonna be. Yes, 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 guy. Yes. yes. You thought this was gonna be. This is his time. Like yeah. everybody, fans yeah. wanted him to be in this spotlight. And the WWE like, love Daniel Bryan. Yeah. He's so and great. He's so you, you good. Like, enough, I, I, He's so good. I know a lot good. about modern wrestling, but I watched one little documentary. All right, and there was Dusty in here when I watched it. 
there's a little bit of wellness. <laughs> that, uh, that was it. Like, uh, Daniel Bryan can do no wrong. The one that he is mentioning is Connor Cure. the Crusher. Yeah, oh Connor's God, Cure, man. Don't even, don't even say the name. So, Connor the Crusher. Can... So, Connor the Crusher. Uh, so, every year, what WrestleMania will do is they give a Warrior Award, and they'll give it to somebody that either is disabled or they have some kind of terminal illness. like Or with, they've done something. Amazing. Right. Like, so they had this little boy, Connor. He was probably six or seven years old. He had a terminal disease. So he, he was not going to make it. They weren't even sure if he was going to make it to WrestleMania. Um, so pretty much Daniel Bryan, like, oh, he was a like, helm on it. He, yeah, he was like his honorary son. Like, he yeah, literally he when, brought him to the front row of the show. Yeah. So and he, he got like, him in the ring before the show even started. Right, and he became essentially what it was is he was like Daniel Bryan's like mascot. And this was the whole when the crowd turned, when everybody flipped out and they were going to cancel the Dirty subscriptions. So Dirty finally got their head out of their ass and like, well, we got to make this guy. We got to put him in the main event. We screwed everybody. They're really mad. So essentially what happens is Daniel Bryan wins a match that gets him into the main event. Then he wins the main event that he wasn't even supposed to be in. And the first thing he does is go over to Connor. And when you see him go to Connor, you're just like, holy shit. Watching Stephanie and Triple H with them, you're like, oh my God, they're human beings. Yeah. Like you don't. And then the crazy thing is, is the kid, they did not expect him to survive as long as he did. And he actually lasted through the WrestleMania. And then I think he died like a few weeks few later. Few it was weeks like later, one of those yeah. things where he pretty much made it to the event. And then Whoa. it. But then, yeah, once you see it, man, if you if you don't have some kind of feelings when you watch that, you're uh, just a, you're a sociopath. Me and, Z- me and Ziggy were sitting there, and me and Ziggy are too big. We're pretty They're tough men. guys. We're menly men. <clears throat> we're and, something, but God, oh uh, We were crying like little bitches. It's, oh. it's, it's so good. It's so good that they did that. That's one oh. of those things that Dodie does not get enough credit for is yeah. their humanitarian work. And then just things that they do, just the things they do. for Like the and, dad, when you see the dad talking about his son, you're just like, I couldn't imagine going Nine times out of ten, ladies and gentlemen, big guys are just big wusses Especially underneath. when it comes to children. You know yeah, what I mean? You see are, kids and you're just We are like, going to cry like nobody's oh, business yeah. when it comes to kids. It was... It's so it, good. It was, it was one of those <clears throat> moments. I, like, I'll show it to you, Thomas, at some point, probably like after the podcast, because I don't need to be balling on the air. <laughs> um, it, the humanity of it touches you so deep yeah. that you're like, this is amazing. Yeah, even nice. especially, like I said, when you see Stephanie talking about it. Yeah, you know and what she's I mean? crying. And she cries the whole time she talks about and it. she's a bad guy on TV. Yeah. Like, she's, she's, she's literally Vince McMahon as a woman. Yeah. She's got the eyes, the stare. Like, like if I saw her in person, I'd probably shit my... I would be Poopy Pants McLaughlin. Like, I would but shit... But you are. Well, I still... Okay, I would make it true. <laughs> um, but what about you, Josh? What's your favorite match type? Um, my favorite match type... Uh, it's got. It's the one that ends all. Uh, I believe it should end all um, rivalries. Right. And that's the hardcore match. No oh rules. No disqualification. I love. I love. A, I love a no disqualification match. Ugh. Um, just just for the simple fact of it's it's. It doesn't even have to be weapons. It's two guys, taped up fists, and you know, and if they sell it right, they hate each other. Yeah. And it's perfect. See, like, like the old school, like like yeah, wearing, like, like you gotta wear your tank top and jeans because it's business time. Yeah, it's, 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 <laughs> Wahoo McDaniel's that's coming that's out. How you, that's how you know it's a street fight because they, they always wear jeans. They always got their tank top and their tape. I love it though. It's business. It's time. business time. You're like we we got. Or my, I got my jeans or on. If you're triple, triple, or if you're triple God, A, if I ever wrestle or do anything, <laughs> and like if I get into a street fight in the next six months. I'm immediately go. It's business it's time. It's business time. I got my fighting jeans on. <laughs> I'm telling but, you. But like they've got yes in in past years they've gotten a little over the top. Oh where, my god, they kill each other now. Yeah, they've they've gotten to some ridiculous matches. Well, um, you have to now because the way that content is exposed now. Yeah. And and, if you go oh to, yeah. Like as a whole, if you think about it, when you guys were watching WrestleMania and initial stuff on TV, mm-hmm. that would be your exposure to this type of thing. Mm-hmm. Throughout, right you know, now, maybe once a week, I maybe sometimes twice yeah. a week if you yeah. had a recording of it. But now it seems like, with you being able to go and just pull up these best ofs, or if you're able to go on and say, "Hey, check this out," right, you're less exposed to it. So you almost have to ump the ante, and it, yeah. like yeah, that's you get like desensitized, right? Kind and of, it kind yeah. of it, it teeters on possibly too much. Then it does because if you go and too that's, far, and that's the ECW, the, indie, the, yeah, the ECW effect. And then yeah, right the now. indies are real bad with that now. Yeah, you're, why would you set yourself on fire for fifty people? There's no yeah. friggin' point. Yeah. Right, fifty no. people and, and you're gonna get and, paid twenty dollars maybe. I, I agree. The ECW effect is a thing. You can't do it every match. Right, 
Um, but I love it as a end of a feud. Like, uh, right. I love the whole... Like, I always say the best ones are the ones where they touch home. Uh, like, when Randy Orton was on the punting spree and he punted Stephanie McMahon. Right. And Triple H returned for a street fight against him. Right. That was a good one because these are two guys you don't need to give roles to right now. He just kicked the man's wife in the head. Right. Well, it's like the Jericho and, and Shawn Michaels. Jericho Shawn Michaels. That's another good or one. Or Jericho punches Shawn Michaels' wife in the face. Yeah. And he accidentally hit her for real. Yeah. And she actually... I love the story. <laughs> Could about you okay. imagine that? You punch a guy's wife, and but you, you, you kind of don't miss or pull it back. And he hit her for real. <laughs> you for kind real of the, like you punch her right in the face, and then when she's in the back on the gurney, Shawn Michaels, he's like, yeah, Shawn Michaels just had that dead stare. He said he wouldn't say anything to me. He just stared at my face, and you're like, yeah, I know what that dead stare is, and that that's it for me. I'm picking up what he's putting down. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine just sitting over for a man, he's just staring at you, not saying anything, when his wife is like, my... My jaw. He dislocated her jaw. He he, he clocked her. Dude, yeah, so and, and, yeah, and you and mean to. Is, and, and we need to preface this for them. There's no hatred between oh, yeah. the two. Right. They know, I, I get that. They know the business. Right, and but at that point, they're definitely Oh, was. yeah, there's some, there's some heat. Yeah. So then I'll ask you a similar question then that okay. I asked Jason earlier. So then where do you see this particular match taking place as... We talked about uh, your Royal Rumble being almost right. as if like it's a staple or a badge of honor that yeah. permanently gets added to your career. So I, when you see I, these bloodbath, these kind of brutal I matches, no rules. Like the what best is it? ones, the best ones are the undercard ones, the ones that don't have a title attached to mm-hmm. them. They are strictly a grudge match, and these right. are two guys that are playing off. They legitimately hate each other, right. and. Right. So then you uh, see them as more of like resolutions to yes, certain arcs. Yes. Yes. So the, the, oh yeah, that is a that is a yeah. great ending to an arc because mm, one yeah, that's their get blow the off match. Out of them. Yeah. yeah. And um, it usually it was Mick Foley, and usually Mick Foley was the good guy in them, and usually he got the shit kicked out yep. of him. He was getting right. speared through a table on fire. Or yeah, like many that. a times. Yeah, and landing on thumbtacks. He's probably taken more thumbtacks to his human body than anyone alive. Yeah. Um, but yes, that. I like the ending resolution to a grudge being a hardcore match because it, it, it almost gives a sense of animalism to it because we are all animals inside and we all have this inner just kind of, you know, I'm ferocity. A teddy, I'm a teddy bear. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, just, a teddy bear. He doesn't like giant teddy bear. Well, a giant teddy bear would be terrifying if it got pissed off. Yeah, but it's still a bear. Yeah, it's still a bear. It's a teddy bear. Okay? Like, hold on a second. He's so Y'all teddy bear. Like, it's oh, a bear. Oh, it's a, so hold on a second. You're going to tell me you'd be terrified of a, of a giant teddy bear? Of a that was pissed off. 350 pound teddy bear. Teddy bear. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Because Y'all what like, if you yeah. pissed it off? I'm just saying, God. like, you don't want to get on its Y'all bad some, side. Yeah. All right. So, <laughs> what if teddy bear lost its mind. So moving on, she moving on from a, he hit him with a chair and he just happen? fucking loses. Good lord. So <laughs> moving on from our teddy bear argument, Ziggy, you have not given us your. Mine was Helen. It was Helen himself. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He started it. All right. Yeah. Um, well, give us. Do you have another one? Um. Match type is what you're saying. Match right? type or or just match. I mean, yeah. you want to do match? Give us a match. Do favorite match. Um. Well, okay. Yeah, so let's make this a long. Well, like, like we were saying, um, so my favorite, my actual favorite, uh, and it's, it's a whole show. It's not a match. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, was actually here, um, over here at CFCC. As a matter of fact, when I was about ten years old, my father started working wrestling events at CFCC Holy in their shit. gymnasium. On this card, which if I can find this, 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 the the pam- or not the pamphlet, but the the the, the uh, what's it called? The, play the program, the, play, the, the, the program, program. Yeah, yeah. I'll bring it in. Mm. Wahoo McDaniel's. Oh my God. Dusty oh, wow. Rhodes. Oh my God. Ric Flair. Sting. Okay. Um, the singer. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was he doing there? <laughs> it was a police reunion. Yeah. <laughs> um, they needed security. And who yeah. was the oh, who was the guy who he played the Arabic character with the curly shoes? Oh, uh, Iron Sheik. Iron, Iron Sheik. Sheik. And Iron Sheik. We're all there. Oh, that's cool. And so my, my dad was, uh, he was a cop, as everybody knows, and uh, he was working the event as security. And so after the match, after everything was said and done with, he was like, hey, 
Um, do you want to? This is. I actually met Paul Bear for the first time. But oh he my wasn't God. called Paul Bear oh then. My. He, was called, he was called something else. Uh, Percy Pringle? Yeah. And so, um, he was like, do You, you want to come backstage and meet the wrestlers? This is Percy Pringle. And we're like, and me and awesome. my brother are like, Hell yeah! <laughs> of course so let's we do. Go. So we go yeah. down and do, like, we're chilling with Wahoo McDaniels. It's like, that's insane. It was it was the most ridiculous thing. As, as a and don't get me wrong, of course I'm not a hardcore wrestling fan anymore. But as a child, that memory was is so distinctive. Oh yeah, it's unreal. Like chilling with Wahoo McDaniels, Dusty Rhodes coming up and talking to you like this. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, he can't get it. He can't. Hey, did you get to meet you? You know where? You, did you enjoy the show? And they went up, like, well, I remember what it was. I think the main event was Wahoo McDaniels and Dusty Rhodes, and they went up wrestling in the stands. Oh, nice. So oh, they nice. came out, and, like, the cops are moving everybody. And it was the old wooden, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Old wooden seating. No, like, no, you know, like it is now. Surprise. And they're Wahoo wrestling in the stands. Didn't go through them. Uh, dude, it through was them. amazing. Yeah, and they, awesome. like, were right in front of us. It was so much fun. Mm-hmm. He's a big boy. Oh, it was, it was so cool. And He's then like Sting, nice Sting was cool. Uh, um, he was, well, um, I'm guessing. But I'm, he wasn't called Sting then. He was called something else. And, uh, was and it was it fabulous so Steve Borden or something that. like that? I don't remember, <laughs> but he was not called Sting. It wasn't until years later I saw him as Sting, and I was like, "What? Yeah. I don't." But it was that by far, and it was right here, right here at CFCC. That's insane. Yeah. Uh, and I forget what what wrestling like conglomerate it was. It right. wasn't like it was WWE or WWF or anything like that. Uh, I wonder if maybe it's the NWA. I don't remember. I really don't remember. So that sounds like a lot of NWA guys. That's I have insane. two matches that are my favorite. One of which because I got in a shoving match with a wrestler, and it's a shoving match that Jason <laughs> loves to hear about. Oh boy. Um, I got into a shoving match with David Flair, Ric really? Flair's son, because <laughs> I called him a coked out you nobody. David Flair was it coked true, out though? nobody. Yeah, you uh, coked out nobody. Was it true though? Oh yeah! Oh yeah! <laughs> He's a druggie. Big yeah. Time. When you see who, when you see his sister and then him, and you're like, oh, your sister's probably going to be the greatest women re- woman wrestler of all time. Yeah. And then you you see him, and you're just like, what happened? Yeah. Like, like Ric Flair, you didn't think he passed his jeans on mm-hmm. until his daughter started wrestling, and He's you're the like, only man that oh, have- you're one of the best ever. Yeah. Just wrestlers ever. Yeah. He could uh, he could get a rosy cheek from a 72 degree room. Oh, David Flair? Yeah, yeah his face remember, was always red. He'd come out and he'd look like he just ran a mile, but he he would just come out of an AC room yep. smiling. Good yep. road. It's like, good God, he man. He was not good. Um, Yeah, I got into a shoving match with him, and I was like 16 at the time. Wow. And you were probably still three times bigger than yeah. he was. He was a little guy. Um, But my favorite match of all time that I got to see was the Four Horsemen versus the, um, the Legion of Doom. The um, Kevin Sullivan. Oh, oh, the Dungeon of Doom. Dungeon of Doom. I'm sorry, the yeah. Dungeon of Doom versus uh, Kevin Sullivan's faction, the Dungeon of Doom. And it was Arn Anderson, Ric Flair, and Tully, I believe. Yeah, Tully Blanchard. Tully Blanchard versus uh, now Big Show, then the Giant. Mm. Um, uh, Ming. And I want to say Kevin Sullivan was in the match as well. Yeah, and then maybe like. And I got to see that one live. And the reason it's my favorite one is because I was front row, and wow. Flair got knocked out of the ring, and he rolls out of the ring, and he stands up, and he goes, he like taps me on the chest, and he goes, "Woo!" Right in front of me. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been a Ric Flair fan till the day I die. Yeah, because he's your your favorite of all time. Yeah, right? he's he's up there. So oh, yeah. I love you some Ric Flair. Um. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that was. Uh, it's funny because I my favorite match has Ric Flair. My other favorite match, I was getting assaulted by one of his offspring. Right. <laughs> yeah, the, the yeah happened. the less talented one. Yeah, the the no talent yeah. of the family. I yeah I know because if it was his daughter, she's she's no joke either. She'd, She'd have killed me. That's what we're saying that she would have whooped Josh's ass. She'd have killed me. She's when yeah she is a physical specimen. When you see her, you're like. Wow, no. I kind of want to yeah. watch a girl beat the crap out of Josh. But if you see her and you compare it to all the other at? women. Ari can do it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if you see her compared to her to other women wrestlers, you're like, it's not like how, like, China was like, okay, she was a beast. Like, she just has this athletic build where you're like, yeah, nobody would compete with you. If this was, like, for real, nobody would beat you. Mm-hmm. She's way too, she's just, she's just built, you know? Yeah. 
So but, what about um, yours? My favorite match? Mm-hmm. Uh, that you've been to? or That, that I've been, been to. to. That's it's tough. Just, um, you've been to a couple then, right? Yeah. I'm kind of out of this one because I don't have any that I've been to. Well, I've well, been I mean, to a, you have I've a been favorite to a that you've few. seen? Definitely. But yeah, well, we'll, we'll just I'm do curious that. to hear yours, yeah. though, first. Yeah, My yeah, favorite that I've ever seen in person. Um, I mean, we oh, that's 26. Tough. Yeah, but I was also at... I was also at Bash at the Beach when Hogan turned heel. That's uh, true. I was, I was there, Bash too. The yeah. I was there as so well. So whenever Hogan turned heel. That's back in the NWO days, man. That's when they formed him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was 96. I still have the Please. ticket. Uh, I, was cro- I was I was, young. I was was eight years old. No, that's not mine. Um, and uh, I was crying when he turned. I, I was, remember. I was such a Hogan fan. I, I cried. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite match that I probably have ever seen, was it was seven. terrible. I remember my dad coming up to me and being like, the security guard just said that uh, Hogan's here. And I was like, oh, no fucking way. And then uh, and then he comes out and he like drops my hopes and dreams. Yeah. Um, but he leg dropped my childhood. He literally changed yeah. my life with that he leg drop. the top ropes and then just landed flat on your childhood. He so did. He did. When he came in there and leg dropped Macho Man, I was like, that's my life right there. But you got to understand, sure when you went there, every yes. kid in the arena was crying. Yeah, everybody was a Hogan fan. Hey, I mean, Brian? it was horrible. Were you there? Yeah. Oh, well, shit, three of us were there. No, yeah. that's our favorite um, match. My favorite match I've ever seen, though, is probably the WrestleMania 24 match when uh, Shawn Michaels beat Ric Flair and retired him. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. That's just horse. That's crap. another one I showed him, yeah. and he it was that one, it was that one, that one, that one, that one. Why do you keep showing me these videos in construction areas, yeah. okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That one or the or the Undertaker one, because depending on the day, Undertaker's my favorite. Um, when Undertaker, because he wrestled in the main event, so I got to see... The Druid entrance, Undertaker, all his guys coming out with the flames and everything, and then he beat Edge in the main event at WrestleMania, which I was just like, holy shit. Uh, but that Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair match, I've never seen 60,000 people crying in one building before. Like, yeah, I've never seen it was so there much was construction emotion. construction bats outside, I swear. Yeah, I've never seen so much emotion from a crowd in anything in my life like that. You have not seen anyone play scenes from The Notebook in a stadium before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. Bravo, sir. Right, imagine, Bravo. right, imagine that, but in a wrestling match. I can't. Um, I cannot imagine. Oh, you should. I cannot oh, imagine. So it's one any of wrestler things. walking up to somebody. Where? What do you want? Yeah, what, what, do, what do you what want? Do you, what do you want? Okay. So what do you want? It ends with one of the wrestlers telling the other wrestlers that he's sorry and I love you, and then he kicks his face yeah. off. Yeah. And then they're both crying in the pit. Like, like and also, the also you remember like this is off. yeah. This is the <laughs> end of a forty-year career. Yeah. Much. He no. ended. He ended his career there, and, and uh, you could see it was so heartbreaking because when you see Ric Flair get pinned. He's literally just laying on the ground crying. He's crying, and then all of his kids are in the crowd, and they're all crying, and then every, everybody in the crowd's just just flipping out. And I went and saw it with Paul, and my buddy Paul, his favorite wrestler of all time is Ric Flair. And he, yeah. he wrestled my favorite wrestler of all time <laughs> in, at that WrestleMania, so it was just right. insane to see. And, and it wasn't like one of those matches where you watched it and you knew Ric Flair was going to lose. You just didn't think... Oh, this, this is, is that retirement match. Yeah, you know what I mean? Because you can kind of see some of those coming sometimes. You thought the dirtiest right. player in the game was going to pull it that, out. Somehow. Yeah, I never thought. I was right. like, nah, it's WrestleMania. Shawn Michaels is like Mr. WrestleMania, but he doesn't really win that much. And remember, he, he, so, Shawn at this point was playing the heel. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and he to, got hurt and, right at the beginning of that match. Yeah. He took he took a moonsault, hit the, hit the table, and you could just see his ribs just smash right into the side of the table. Mm. So do you think the impact of the match was even more greater because of the because whole. the ending. Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. If he did, if if Ric Flair would have won, the I, nobody would have remembered that match. Well, even yeah. change it up if the the outcome was still the same and right. the uh, the retirement wasn't there, would it still have been as as impactful? impactful? No, I don't think no, so. No, I think okay. the I think you you're literally watching like the oldest wrestler in the world. Yeah. His career is ending, so which right. some people think and is the probably, best wrestler of all time. Yeah, you know probably, what I mean? yeah. He's definitely Arguably in the, the argument. Best wrestler right, I mean, he's definitely top when you, three. When you talk about wrestling, there's that, there's that Mount Rushmore, and the two faces that stand high above everybody else's are Hogan and Hogan and Flair. And, and Hogan you were either Flair. a Hogan fan because you love WWE or WWE F. Or you were a Flair fan because you WCW the was their yeah. He, that, <laughs> D, uh, NWA WCW, your Hulk Hogan was Ric Flair, mm. and he was a better he was better all around yeah. than Hogan. Hogan you was don't, just but a you big just, you didn't guy see that, that. as a kid. I thought Hogan was. I mean, like everybody, you're just like this guy's a god. Like, yeah, he's he was, just and, he's and so we can good. say it now. He was a big guy that was charismatic. Right. Um, right. And he and in a lot of his things were too were his opponents. That's the yeah. thing. Is his opponents made him really good. Yeah. Ric Flair made. 
his opponent's better. Yes. That was the difference, is yeah. that Hogan got better through who he wrestled. If he didn't have enemies, you wouldn't have Hogan. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if you don't right. have the bad guy, then there's no good guy. Right. Ric Flair was the bad guy. Yeah, that's that was the great thing, because you didn't care about Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. He was... He was a he was a karate character. Right. Like he, that's he was all like, he was. That was all he was was a baby face. Yeah, yeah, he was just a baby face. He was a karate character, but Flair busting his face and him right. having that the busted up nose yeah. for six months. Right. And it was an accident, but him having that busted face for six months that was the best thing ever happened to his career because right. he got to face Flair for six seven months yeah, and have some uh, of the best matches of all time. Yeah. They have and a they won have the a, world title off of it. Yeah. They have a they have a I think it's a three match. Story arc is mm-hmm. the best way to put it, and they're like three of the best matches that you'll ever see. And they're in the '80s when people didn't wrestle like that. You yeah, didn't and, see, you saw slow point, plotting matches. And at this point, Steamboat again, not a lot of depth at all right. as a character. Right. Oh yeah, no. But but you when you wrestling Ric Flair, you I mean he's just gonna make you better just by mm. being there. It's like with Shawn mm. Michaels. They were trying to figure out a bad Shawn Michaels match. Ric Flair is the same way, where it's just like. Even like a slower plotting Ric Flair match, you're still like, it's still Ric Flair. It's yeah. still going to make everybody good. Yeah. Um, well, what about you? Um, I'm not going to get the opponent, but um, I was talking about a little bit earlier when we were initially... The Stone know, Cold? Yes, I would say that um, the match that comes to my mind <coughs> is Stone Cold versus... Bret Hart. Bret Hart. Hart. Um, just yeah, their submission I was match. Really young. I think I initially had done the math. I was like, I you were like four, four or five, yeah. Four or five, and that's really young, but I remember yeah. seeing that kind of thing. And I was like, holy cow, this yeah. is a lot. And my dad was sitting there, he's like, is this too much? He asks the four-year-old. And I didn't quite have a response. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> yeah, like, I don't like, know. He asked the just, four-year-old. But, four-year-old yeah, looks at him and goes, Because uh, you, were, you were watching it at a time when wrestling said they was had changing. A crimson mask. Yeah. yeah, that's wrestling, up to you, dog. I don't know. Wrestling literally went from your age group to teenage age group. That's like, when yeah. at that time, it went from, like, eat your vitamins and blah, 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 say your prayers to... Stone Cold beating up his boss. Right. Yeah. And then I watched that later, and it was a very, very, very entertaining fight. It's really Very good much match. so. Yes, yeah. And then um, watched a little bit of it when we were sitting a little bit beforehand, and I really was just like, wow, this holds up. This is one of those yeah. things that holds up. Yep. And I feel like it kind of ties back to what you're saying about like the iconic moments. Right. And when you think of those iconic moments, you know, you think about the guy busting up his the bottom part of his lip and then you right. know, stick his tongue through, or you think about right. the first time Undertaker takes the stage, or you think about yeah. like oh, the moment of oh transformation when uh, The Rock initially... Yeah, that, like, that's... If Rocky that's might be it to The it, Rock. To The yeah. Rock, yeah. yep. Or if he you became think, the biggest thing ever. Right, I and mean, if you think about it, like you see these developments in these moments, right. you can see like just these pivotal things, and I feel like that right there, like you're saying, um, I inadvertently was watching the transition from... Uh, early younger kid or wrestling to right. the, to, to the to attitude era. Yes. Yeah. And you mm-hmm. get to that kind of thing. And that's when I think not too long after that, the diva stuff started to yeah, happen. Everything. Like, DX, everything all started to yep. change up to it. And it was a goal probably, I mean, again, this is outside in, but I think the goal was to initially captivate a different kind of audience. And you have these different types of metamorphosis that take right. place. Yeah. And I think that was definitely one of those matches. Right. And looking back on it, I'm like, wow, I'm really glad I saw that on TV with my dad. Right. You know, maybe there should be better parenting involved. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but time, you know, that's just how it is. That time, that moment. It could be worse. It's not but, that I mean, bad. Yeah. Wrestling, everybody watched wrestling. Yeah. My perspective, when I was 8 through 11, I rewatched the first three Austin Powers movies way too many times. And I was repeating <laughs> it way too many times. <laughs> so, like... I remember those years. I love Goldmember. Yeah, it, yeah uh, it, it's, a good, it's a good movie. It's not something you should put onto your I parent, like children. Right. No. I really repeat like everything. How he's like, yeah. Oh my god, I couldn't imagine that. He's watching it all bad. three at like eight. <laughs> Literally, the first one came out when I was a junior in high school. Yeah, it's <laughs> age difference, people. Yeah. Age, yeah. Difference. Yeah. age difference. I remember watching Gold Member when I was like nineteen. Yeah, yeah it's definitely oh. not one you should be repeating. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. No, not when you're just like other kids and kids. Yeah, it's cool like, because yeah. you got to, you got to see. Uh, you don't really realize it at a time, but you did. You got to see like one of the catalysts that changed wrestling history. Like, you got yeah, to see hey. pretty much the birth of Stone Cold. You know, well, he has, not like, even that. Well, he has like, the King of the Ring thing. Kind of, you got to see us kind of go from the young, uh, the youth movement that Vince right. McMahon was doing right. to the Attitude right. Era overnight. Right. And that's that's a huge thing. Because when, we, when you were a kid and... When you were a junior in high school, <laughs> um, you were slightly less older than um, you are now. Uh, <laughs> pop culture, <laughs> pop culture was changing, and right. WWE realized <clears throat> at that point we got to change with it. Right, and because you got the Simpsons, Beavis and Butthead, 
that sort of stuff happening. Everything. MTV and was blowing that's up. Kind of, yeah. That kind right. of stuff 10 years before would have been thrown off the air in two episodes. You would have never, yeah, yeah, you would have yeah, never gotten it. so much trouble. You know but they, but that, that era is pretty much like, that's what made, like, that's when it went mainstream. Because, yeah. like, you, I would agree you literally yeah. saw an NWO shirt, a Stone Cold shirt, like maybe a Sting mm-hmm. shirt. You saw wrestling shirts everywhere. Yeah, the very Everybody next day. watched wrestling at that time. Yeah. I had a couple of the like original kind of action figures when they right. first started mm-hmm. to do those exactly. particular ones. Like, yeah, the ones that had now, like here's... I remember them being like standing out right. because they had so much mobility by comparison oh, yeah. to a lot of other stuff. If yeah, you it's go, the eighty ones are to like yeah. a GI Joe that I originally had, where yeah. you had just shoulders and then right. Just maybe you had hands that rotated, but that was it. But Karate then you've got action. guys right. that can fully, fully articulate. Like, yeah, you know, when you're younger, that's really cool. Oh right. yeah. So and then well, oh, they one more thing about that match too. You got to see one thing that is super rare in wrestling, and you got to see a double turn in that match because Stone Cold went in as the bad guy, Bret Hart went in as the good guy, and at the end of the match, Bret Hart turned heel, Stone Cold became a face because you mm. sympathize with the guy. That's that's gonna take that kind of beating, and he's gonna bleed and pass out. Like the match was, one of them had to submit. Yeah, and, and neither it, um, of them did. It, Ken Shamrock was the guest. Ken rep. Shamrock, and by the way, Ken Shamrock showed more emotion in that match than his whole run in oh, the WWE, yeah. which is. But insane. you got to see like the perfect double turn, which never ever ever happens. You never see two wrestlers go in, other than like when you saw the Hulk Hogan versus The Rock. That's the only other time. Because they wanted The Rock to be the good guy and Hulk Hogan to be the bad guy. Absolutely. But then Hulk Hogan came out at WrestleMania and people were like, we're not going to fucking boo Hulk Hogan. Are you insane? Yeah. Like, even today, Hulk Hogan come back. He's not going to get booed. Even though all that BS went on with him, if Hulk Hogan, if dun, 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 comes on, yeah. you're going to lose, lose your mind. freaking mind. Oh, yeah. So we're going to end with Ziggy's comment. Ziggy had... Well, I, one... had a, I had an interesting take on things. And, and listening to all the... The, you know, all the discussion, of, and of course you two are much bigger wrestling fans currently than Thomas and myself are. Um, one of the things that I thought was really interesting is, of course, we're talking about, other than Jason, um, stuff that happened a while ago. Right. Mm-hmm. So what has changed now? Like, we're not in the Attitude Generation anymore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're not in, I mean, is wrestling then kind of stagnant now compared to what it was? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, because it was, yeah. well, I remember, like, like we said, after... When the gener- when the the DX and NWO and the WCW wars was happening, right? I remember going to school and for the first time, people wearing wrestling clothing. Yeah. Right. They had Stone Cold shirts. Right. They had NWO shirts. Right. They had everything under the sun. Yep. To the fact where, honestly enough, as and I was in high school, I bought that shit because oh, it was yeah. popular to wear it. Oh, right. I wore I wore my Wolf NWO Wolf shirt. Yeah. I, I, I got in shirt. trouble for my Sting shirt in middle school. Yeah. So it's the and so. <laughs> yes. I know, God. Again. They hate the police so bad. Yeah. Oh, um, but let's so see how many more we can get in there. How? Yeah. How do? Is there a way for them so, to go back to that level so, of popularity? So what, I, what I've said on numerous occasions is, the WWE is in a stage right now where guys are so afraid to lose their spot, and they're so afraid to lose their spot. That they're not performing, they're doing exactly what the writers are telling them. Right, nobody stands out. Nobody stands There's out. There's no character. Nobody's taking a jump, nobody's taking a leap. Stone Cold, in today's atmosphere, he ripped this he ripped through the roster because he takes he took risks. And that's what a lot of those guys mm-hmm. would do. Yeah. Could you imagine seeing like Triple H, The Rock, Chris Jericho, like in their prime now? Run, they oh, would they run eat through. these wrestlers yeah. alive. Yeah, they, there'd be there'd be Reports of fights on backstage because they they rip through all these guys just on the mic in the matches they go hard punches in the matches the whole nine yards. What I think is the problem is we are now a generation of uh, immediate. Did I do a good job? Oh right, uh, yeah. yeah, the yes, instant gratification. Yeah, instant gratification. I right. need. I need. There's no long building arcing right. stories anymore. Right, and. Like it's, exactly, it's all about what have you done for me lately. People's yeah. attention spans have just are gone, and these guys, these guys don't go into the match like Big Cass, who was just released from the WWE. Amazingly talented guy, right? He did not take risks. He mm-hmm. he kept the same character he's had the whole time. Did the same five moves. same five moves, and uh, if five moves is fine, I don't really care about that as much. I want you to evolve as a character, and mm-hmm. you don't. And you don't take risks on the stage. 
The last person I really see that took risk on the stage was who? Daniel Bryan, maybe? The Yes Movement? Yeah, and before him it was CM Punk. CM Punk, um, John Cena, uh, Ruthless Aggression. Um, yeah, well, because John Cena can, yeah, he's their golden boy. Yeah, but, I mean, rightfully so, honestly. I mean, right. best-selling merchandise probably of all time. Probably, yeah, uh, yeah. Really yeah. The guy spent more time with Make a Wish kids than any other human being alive. Alive, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. He, and I mean, by not just like a little bit, but like double. Oh yeah. Anybody it's else? It's not even close to how much yeah, John Cena's like, done uh, for Make a Wish. John Cena's the man. Yeah, it's not as much as you may hate him as whatever. I mean, the guy. The the guy he's amazing. He's a good person. Yeah. Do they have to give him special glasses because he's invisible? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, all the chil- all the children, they get those. Um, they, they get, get they, Doctor Who like. Or like they, they oh, live. It's like they yeah. live and they. They yeah. live. Oh he's my like, God, <laughs> right? You pull that they live. Yeah. Reference. Is he like got ultraviolet spectrum? Is that what that, like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he's um. So he's which is another one we never gifted. Roddy individual. Piper and how great Roddy oh, Piper. Oh, Roddy Piper. Yeah, I love that. They, they live. It's great. So then again, I'll say that outside looking in. Okay. Just the theory. If you were to take essentially the oh, entire everything and alter one thing in an attempt to try to reignite or respark some things because I could think of two things I could think either if they completely from groundwork from top to bottom redo like almost a new rule set or if you even do a whole new set of specialty matches or if you even do entirely some like just something completely different from the standard things because I mean when was the last time there was a new like format well yeah there's not really ever been something like a new format the last time I could think of something like that was the reset in WCW which ultimately killed them Um, but I agree with you. It is there is a staleness to what we are right. seeing. Right. We have seen it over and over. Maybe take a take a rap from what NXT is doing right now, and anybody at any time could be the man. It's just you got to prove it. And right. these guys, they're not proving it. They're just waiting for their call up. Right. And right. NXT, it's just like you got guys like Ricochet who are going out there and. Yeah, we've seen it before, but they're doing it on live TV. Right. And they're doing amazing things that no one's seen. And now they're like, okay, main event picture. Yeah. Oh, cool. You mean a cruiserweight's in the main event picture? Yeah, because he's outperforming everyone. Right. Right. Yeah. With me, I think um, you need more. You need more characters. You need to let people just be, like, <clears throat> like with Stone Cold. Stone Cold is literally. He says it all the time. He's Stone Cold just turned up to 11. He's just him. Jericho's that, Jericho's turned up to 11. Exactly. You just you got to stop writing for these people right. that you don't know like their their characters. You know what I mean? Like if you play a character for 15 years, you know that character better than anybody. Inside you know what now, I mean? Cuz that's your forward. character. So they get, they need to let them do that. The <clears throat> Not so much the birth, but like the expansion of the internet, really did not help. Yeah. Um, every giving all it these takes, guys Twitter access and being able to. It takes away that shield of you don't know. Yeah. There's no. There's no like uh, mystique anymore. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? It's like, it'd be like, yeah, you're really into this movie. You know, you could be into. The, it'd be like in the Avengers. If all the Avengers had Twitter accounts and <clears throat> constantly posting shit, and you're just kind of like, and they're all just talking about, oh, me and Thanos were out having dinner last night. You're like, but why? What? The, why would you do that? With he's the. You know what I mean? Like, he's right. the I bad understand. Guy. Like, it's quote unquote. It's quote unquote fake, which I hate the term. It's predetermined, because it the shit hurts. Um, but I think the it's the mystique that that's kind of. Because yeah, the internet and everything was around in the '90s, but not right. nobody really had it. Or if you did, you had dial-up. It wasn't like so easily accessed, like with your phones and everything. Right. Um, so I, think, I think they just need that one guy. There's like no there's guy. No Maybe potentially not even just one guy. So it's what it's sounding like is that the format needs to change from top to bottom. You need to have that exclusivity to where if you're only seeing these guys either once or twice a week, that probably would breathe new life into it. Right. Because then you're looking forward to it. There's so much wrestling now. And if you're able yeah. to... So and, much. And I think, I think they're kind of doing that with the female division, with, with Rousey. She's being billed as so much better than everybody. She is a <coughs> she is a legit, quote-unquote... Just she's badass. A, she's, she's a judo champion. Man. Yeah, oh my she's, god! Watching her throw that, watching medalist. that that hip toss to Nia Jax. Yeah. Holy crap! That was but incredible. I think they're doing it with the female division. We're seeing a little bit more. These are exclusive athletes to us. Before it was, they were badasses, right. and they had characters and stuff like that. 
I'd like to see it move more to an athlete per se. Like, oh, we just, you know, big news: LeBron signs with the uh, Lakers. The, L- the Lakers. Ugh. The same thing needs to happen with WWE. Right. You need to make these people seem like like superheroes. Superheroes. They need well, to be, yeah, like the question, then, there was so one of the things that drove the success of the WWE was competition. Right. They killed off all their competition. It's true. So you're totally now, true. So yeah. now without any competition, you're the only game in town. Right. That means even if I don't like the 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 product you're producing, if I want that product, you're the only place I can go to get it. Yeah. Right. Now there are smaller ones. I right. Know, it, and it, then it, like and then too like there's New, New Japan, Japan yeah, which New if you Japan. say New Japan's smaller, those fans there's, will lose their minds. But it's, but there's it's, small, it's not definitely smaller. It's big it's in Japan, smaller. but uh, here yeah. it's not. It's, it's, yeah, small, it's like they're smaller right. companies. Yeah, yeah they're all independent. WWE is. The it's the juggernaut. biggest one. So right. what? What in reality? I think then, what they need more so than anything else, is something to compete against. That's true. And they were try. They you know they fans wise they try to do it with UFC, but then UFC. That's legitimate fighting. That's undetermined. You can't really compete against that. No, it's, and it's, it's apples and oranges. Yeah, it really is. It's not the same thing, and that's no. that's what always drives me crazy about Joe Rogan's bullshit about wrestling. Because it's just like no wrestling fans talk shit about your UFC because as legit as UFC is, there is still room to rig it. Like you're no, not you going to tell me there's never been a UFC or boxing match that has never been there's predetermined. Been you know what I mean? People yeah. are like, um, uh, this was definitely rigged. Yeah, right. Don King. You've never well, you know got I mean? any matches predetermined. <laughs> well, no, even UFC matches. Like, yeah. there's been multiple matches where somebody was like, uh, yeah, you're, yeah, that was a phantom punch. Yeah. Like, yeah, you're dropping into anything. Right. Right. Or you have the judges that vote a certain way. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. You're. Oh, yeah. The whole belt retention thing in the UFC is annoying. Right. Yeah. Like, you, you got to, like, if you're going to the judge scorecard and you're the one contending for the belt, not the one holding the belt, you, you basically have to. You, like he has to lay there the entire time, and you just manhandle the crap. Right. Up. Otherwise, it doesn't matter what you do, because they're not going to give it to you. Well, yeah, guys, that's that, about our time. That is a uh, shoot cast, and all I gotta say is, from the son of a plumber, <laughs> son of a plumber, the son of a plumber, <laughs> son of a plumber, and good night, guys. Good night. All right, bye. Good night.